look at this table. It's becoming so beautiful. The ruined homes, the gnarly trees, those stone ruins make me wobble at the knees. What is this daddy gonna make us today? A spicy wagon? Some dirty roads? I bet he even paints with gray. It kind of makes a wizard wonder. Oh boy, I need a nap. Hello folks and welcome to Dice Chatter. Today we are building some awesome modular cobblestone roads that you can use in your tabletop games. Look at the modularity. modularity. Whether you are roaming the ruined streets of Felstad, Mordheim, or that desolate city in your D&D campaign, these stone roads will be a perfect addition to your games. These terrain pieces are also an easy project, one that can be tackled over the weekend and be ready for that next tabletop adventure you are going on. So with all that being said, let's jump right into the build. As with all of my builds that need a sturdy base, I turn to peel and stick vinyl tiles. You can find these in any home improvement store and make sure you get the ones that are one foot by one foot. I wanna make sure these cobblestone roads are the same size as my dirt ones I made a little while back. A video should be popping up in the corner now. The dimensions for the roads were one foot for the length and four and a quarter inches for the width, and I know I will need a handful of these puppies. Some sections will be a big old L shape, you can't go wrong with a number of straight roads, and a four-way intersection could come in handy as well. Also, make sure to put some PVA glue over the sticky side of the vinyl tile. Trust me, it'll make your life way, way easier and less sticky. While we wait for the glue to dry, we have lots and lots of foam to cut, so let's jump right over to the Proxon. While I get to work here, a number of foam sizes I cut should be popping up on the screen now. Take these numbers down if you want to copy what I've done here. We have two main sections to think about when it comes to these cobblestone roads. The outer edges and of course the main central area where cobblestone slabs and soil will rest. For the outer edges, I wanted to make sure they were noticeable and that the stone lining these edges looked different from the rest of the cobblestones in the central area. That is why I went with longer strips that would line the edges of each road. I also bang these foam strips up doing the old rock tumbler method, but I only do this for these foam sections. For the central area of the roads, I decided to make three distinct sizes. I figure this will add more detail and interest to these roads rather than if I just use one standard brick size. I also shave each foam rectangle down to about four millimeters or so. I keep these very thin because I want them to be recessed below the outer edge foam strips that we just glued down a moment ago. It's a lot of foam and this step takes a minute or two, but these terrain pieces are starting to come together. Again, let everything dry and then and we can move on over to the next step. After bricking all of these cobblestone roads, I went ahead and grabbed an actual brick, or well, at least a broken one. This brick is how we will texture the central sections of the roads. This also may be a good time to let out a little anger. Alright, no need to go crazy like I did, just a casual press and smush should do the trick. Now we move on over to the messy part of the build, the goop step. Get your PVA glue, some play sand, and a bit of water and make a lovely chunky mix. This goop will become all of the mortar, detail, and glue that will hold everything together. I just grab a crappy brush that I don't care about and slap it over each section of the road. I make sure to get in every nook and cranny between each stone slab and on the edges. Also, before things start to dry, I make sure to take a paper towel and run it over each road. This is to remove any of the large sand pebbles or extra goop that is not needed over the main surface of the roads. Obviously, let this one dry overnight. In the morning, after everything has solidified, I run over each road with a paper towel again to knock off any pebbles or sand that decided not to stick during this process. And then I grab the gallon jug of Mod Podge and start putting it over each terrain piece. I thin down the Mod Podge with a bit of water just to make sure it doesn't go on too thick and muddy up any of the details. 
Also, don't forget to add any little extra features at this point. Maybe a skull or two around the roads to show that some battle or maybe famine have occurred here. And of course, many of these stone slabs have gone missing over time, and some temporary wooden planks will do in a pinch for any weary travelers making their way into town. Once everything is in place and dried, we can now move on over to painting. I prime these cobblestone roads black and then follow that up with a quick shot of white for a zenithal highlight from my airbrush. Pretty standard stuff. Then I go over just about every inch of each road with a brown paint. I do this first because I want the bottom most layer of these terrain pieces to reflect the soil that these cobblestone slabs were set into. Of course, I get a little clog in my airbrush, but you know, you all get the point. To follow this up, I then go over every noticeable brick with a dark gray paint. Much of the mud and soil for this build is also present on the bricks protruding from the earth, so this just means you don't need to be perfect. Just cover what is noticeable with gray. And if you want to spice it up a little bit, maybe give a few other bricks a different color. I went with tan, but a red could also fit very well. Once all of this is dry, I cover everything with a black wash, and I make sure to quickly dab off any excess with a paper towel. This is to ensure that we don't desaturate the terrain piece more than is needed. It's going to be a grim dark cobblestone road, not a completely dark cobblestone road. We let this sit for a handful of minutes, and then I come in with a couple paints for dry brushing. A lighter gray for the stone, and a orangey brown for the large sections of soil protruding through. Again, no need to be perfect, some gray and brown will mix together. It's really not a big deal and will actually better blend the terrain piece, giving you a more cohesive end product. To follow this up, we go back to the airbrush and run some contrast paints through it and add some grime to each road. I do some brown and green over various spots and give these terrain pieces that needed dirty texture. And to finally finish things off, we quickly hit the cobblestones with a very faint dry brush of a light gray. Make sure to add in some grass tufts, and we can call these roads complete. There you have it folks, my take on some modular cobblestone roads. It really wasn't my intention from the start, but these roads turned out to be, well, very grimdark, and I'm not really mad about that. Maybe one day I'll come back to these and create some cleaner, less traveled cobblestone pathways. Either way, let me know what you all think of the build, hop on over to the Discord to share your own creations and builds, I'd love to see what you've been working on. Also, don't forget to do all the other socials, check out the Patreon if you'd like to support my work financially, comment, like, and subscribe. Until next time, folks, I want to thank you all for watching, and of course, happy gaming.